Hello, I'm Jolien Ralph and I'm the founder of Mindat.org, which is the world's largest middleware website. I'm starting a series of videos called Rock Stories, covering minerals, geology and other random earth science topics. And what better way to kick things off than an introduction to this website? I'll be running through a lot of the things that you can do with the site and hopefully, if you're new to the site, it will give you a greater idea about what you can do with it. And even if you're a regular visitor, I'm sure there might still be a few things hidden away that you haven't found already. Anyway, let's get started. So, big search box in the front of the page here makes things easy. I'm going to search for quartz. Now, here's a typical mineral page. In fact, I'm, it's unfair to say this is a typical mineral page. This is this is one of our better mineral pages. Uh, it contains a lot more information on quartz than on many of the other species because, well, quartz is such a common and important mineral, so there's been a lot more effort put into this page. So um, all the pages start with um, where we have them. So a header here with some example specimens. And this shows a different range of colours in this particular case of the varieties of quartz. And we'll get and talk about more about varieties later. A little bit of basic information, all the important things, chemical formula, SiO2, which is silicon dioxide, uh, for those of you who are not strong on chemistry, uh, physical properties, history of the name, which in this case is quite complicated, um, and various other um, scientific data here. Then we have a huge descriptive block, which um, this is an enormous amount of work that's been put in mostly by um, Amir Akhavan. And thank you very much, Amir, for your very hard work in putting this together, um, describing the different types of quartzes, the structure, um, the, that there are left and right handed versions of quartz crystals, um, and all of the different forms that can be found. So here is an example showing how quartz has got trigonal symmetry and we'll talk about that another time but um, essentially it's threefold symmetry and this shows how these different elements of the of the trigonal symmetry um, can combine together to form this classic quartz crystal shape and more and more pictures showing different examples of forms um, and twinning and different varieties etc 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 classification scientists love to classify things there are various different classification systems the only one that's really important here is the IMA status if a, a mineral is approved by the IMA which is the International Mineralogical Association then it's well, a real mineral um, anything other than that isn't approved is are things that we may have thought were a mineral in the past, but it's now being proven to either be something else or a mixture or something else is wrong with it. It doesn't quite qualify as, as a mineral. For a mineral, it essentially has to have a unique crisp combination of crystal structure and chemistry. And there are some historical exceptions which are quite annoying, but generally that's the, that's the rule. Um, we've even got a section saying how to pronounce it. So if you want to know how to pronounce Quartz. Then you click this, and it says, "Of oh, quartz." That was me. Okay. Physical properties, um, optical data, which is useful if you're looking at it under a microscope, um, and crystallography. Now here we start getting to the fun bits. So we have a crystal atlas here, showing some of the different forms that quartz crystals can take, starting with the most simple forms which is here, it's a, it's a bipyramidal quartz, and you can rotate this with the mouse. Um, here is a simplified hexagonal prism, uh, terminated prism quartz. And then as you go further down the list, you get more complicated forms, these traditional uh, classic forms here. And even you have twin forms. So this is a, called a, a Japan law twin, and it's two different quartz crystals which are grown together and they always form this this exact angle here when they form this particular type of twin called Japanese law twin and this is the internal structure of quartz now in this case the beige atoms are the silicon and the red are the oxygen and again we can rotate this using the J, JS mole system and it shows the 
uh, the structure of what we call the unit cell. So this block here, this is the smallest block that quartz is composed of. So all quartz crystals are composed of stacked versions of this, uh, stacked in, in three dimensions. And we can show what that looks like. If I go to two by two by two, then here is that same structure. You can see here is our one unit cell, and this is two by two by two, so a total of eight uh, unit cells. You can see this forming this grid. And the fact that everything is sort of linked together in three dimensions like this uh, is one of the reasons why quartz is so hard. And you can tell a lot about the internal, from the internal structure, you can tell a lot about the physical properties and how, how they're related to the, 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 the atomic structure of the uh, material. So let's go to 3x3x3, three by three by three, just even more. And um, here you can see the symmetrical patterns here. Now, um, remember we said that quartz is trigonal and it has, it has a three-fold uh, axis. And you can see here that there are these triangular patterns within it, and that is the essential axis. That is the, um, the reason why quartz has this tr structure, this trigonal structure, forming these um, um, crystals with, with, with uh, basically a threefold symmetry of what appears to be a hexa hex hexagonal structure. Again, you can see that, you know, this sixfold um, mirroring in here as well. Um, that's because of the internal structure. And as you rotate it, you can see that coming out. And on other angles, you don't see it. Anyway, you can play around with that, it's great fun. Um, we have here foreign language names for quartz. Varieties, a huge list of varietal names. Now, for example, amethyst is purple quartz. Citrine is a yellow to orange quartz, uh, and etc, etc, etc. There's probably a whole series of videos we could do about the varieties of quartz. Um, associates, what minerals are found with quartz? And this is based on our photo data. Mm, look at that a bit. So calcite is the most common mineral that we have listed with quartz. Um, different um, Strunz group is a grouping of similar minerals. Um, quartz as it's found in petrology. Now quartz is very common in um, some igneous rocks in particular and in very common in, in a lot of um, sedimentary rocks. In fact, almost most sedimentary rocks you find quartz in. References. Lots of references on quartz. Obviously it's been studied a lot. Um, significant localities for quartz. Now, we don't show everywhere that quartz is found because quartz is literally found almost everywhere. Uh, a grain of sand is a grain of quartz. So, you know, the Sahara Desert is quartz. And um, you can't hardly go outside without finding some form of quartz one way or another. So, yes, what we're limiting it to here in these 242 significant localities are localities where quartz is well known and quartz is forming you know good crystals so lots of places in the Alps for example um, have these al beautiful alpine quartzes um, Belgium there's some lovely quartzes from Belgium as well I've been to some of those places Colombia very famous quartzes coming from there France etc 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 um, so we can click on one of these localities but in fact what we're going to do Rather than do that, I want us to go and search for localities. So uh, I'm going to search for one of my favourites, one of most mineral collectors' favourites, the Sumed Mine. Now, the Sumed Mine in Namibia is one of the most prolific mines, or it was when it was active, it closed down many years ago, for mineral specimens because it has such a variety of minerals. So this is a locality page, um, and it shows us that the Sumed mine is within this region, which is in that region, which is in that country. And you can click on each of those to get a, a regional or national overview of the mineralogy of that area. Uh, some photos from the place. 
coordinates, various other details to do with it, a uh, little description, um, commodities. This is what the mine was worked for, or what there is, it was basically a multi metal mine, particularly for rare metals. And here is the mineral list of all the minerals that have been reported from the mine. And as you can see, it's quite a lot of them. Um, the, uh, the icons next to them, the little camera icon means that we have photos of this mineral from this mine. We're doing quite well for, for this one. And the star, the gold star, means that this mine is the best locality or one of the best localities worldwide for that mineral. And as you can see, this locality is doing pretty well. Um, so let's let's have a look and dig into some of those um, photos and see what we can find. References, of course. Um, so one of the things we can do is we can click on one of these. So if we want to, for example, have a look at all of the photos of Ludlakite, then we click the camera icon here. And there are 63 photos. It just flashed up to show me. And now it shows me all the different photos of Ludlakite that we have from this site. Um, and then if we want to have a look at one of those, we can click on the photo. And this opens up the Mindap Photo Viewer. Now the Mindap Photo Viewer is a very powerful tool um, because not only does it show the photo nicely full screen, we can press the space bar and all of the other stuff disappears on most of it so that we have an uninterrupted view. Uh, but you can also zoom in and out with the mouse. So using the scroll wheel I can zoom in, I can then pan across and I can look at some of the detail here with these crystals. Very, very beautiful. And there's a whole video on this on this uh, viewer because this is a lot more powerful than just this, particularly when we're looking at things like stereoscopic 3D photos and the new power system for for labelling items within a photo. But we'll talk about that later. Let's let's stay with the basic things for today. The up arrow here brings the information box that so shows information about it. That this is a photo that Bruce Cancross has contributed to the site, and description here. So field of view is four and a half centimeters. And this photo was in that photo of the day, uh, in April of March 2020. Now go back to the, remember the home page. They've got that little box on the front page. Oh, let's go and have a look, quick look at it now. This here, this box here, is the photo of the day. So every day we have a new photo on there. And we've got, as you can see, 1.16 million photos. So we're not going to run out of photos to choose for photo of the day anytime soon. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the site. All right, so some other quick things that we can do with the site. Let's have a look at some of the search systems. So minerals by property. So this is a tool that allows you to search for minerals based on, uh, on physical and optical properties. So if I've got a, a, a mineral and it's, I know that the hardness is nine and I know that the color is red, then um, yeah, it's going to show me corundum uh, and and the variety ruby. Both of them, obviously, the same thing in this case um, um, as the number one option. So you can type in all the other properties here that you want, um, and you can say, well, actually, it's got um, chromium in it, and then it's going to sort out here. So you see, this is it. Then starts to um, limit things so nothing is a hundred percent match here chromium metal has the right hardness but the wrong color crocorite has the right color but the wrong hardness so these things are, are less likely to be what you wanted anyway that's the advanced search you can play with that I don't have time to go into everything in massive detail because there's just so much to go through um, minerals by chemistry right so this is the first of two periodic table systems we're going to look at in MINDAP. Um, this is the, the simple one for searching for minerals. If I want to find a mineral that's got, um, I know it's got iron, arsenic, uh, oxygen, but no copper, 
then I click on copper twice there we go, I'll see you click once, twice, so that's now deselected so this now gives me if I select all the minerals include iron, arsenic and oxygen but exclude copper so <coughs> iron arsenates basically um, that exclude copper and here's our list and we can click on one of these food and type for example and here we go here's our page about this iron arsenate mineral um, who it was named after again all of the properties that we saw before um, some more of the crystallography they get a little bit more interesting than the one with quartz and if we scroll down then the localities and obviously this is a map that we can work with we can zoom in so let's have a look around here various localities in the Lake District of England uh, each one of these symbols here indicates a locality where it is found at and we can click on one of those and where we have photos then we can show that um, we can also show just for reference all of the other localities in the area so if we just click on in here so and click Mindat.org localities then this will pull up all the other localities we have in the area and we also have them as a layer here the macroscat geology so we could put overlay the geological map here that shows us we click on that and that shows us that all division lovers is the primary uh, geology of this area here this bit here is Ordovician mudstone, silt, sand, sandstone. So it's a mixture of lavas and sedimentary rocks. Ordovician age is the primary geology here. What's this lighter area in the middle? Uh, Ordovician to Silurian is igneous intrusion. So, so here we have a fell six. So it's a granitic intrusion inside this area. Let's make the bring the opacity in. So that here is the core of that area. We can change the map type. So let's do Google Satellite for example. And Turn the macroscat down almost so it's gone. And here yeah, we can just about still see the, the geology. Let's turn it up a little bit. And here's where that intrusion is. And you can see that's the granitic rock there. So you can com compare the localities to the local geology. Um, and we even have, let's turn off the macroscat for the moment. Um, PDBD localities which are fossil localities so click on that and here we have from the paleo bio DB database this one here is Randall Crag from the middle order vision this one here is uh, a carboniferous locality so I don't know let's click on this one and see what we get so this comes to a different type of locality page which is a, a paleontology locality page and this again shows us the associated paleontological records. This is all information from the paleobiodb or pdbd.org, which is a different database, a separate database, but we're using their data we, uh, within the system to compare and contrast with the, um, with the mineral data. And again, shows us the different types of fossils, graptolites, and, and something else here some kind of sponge um, not the most exciting fossils that are found there well graptolite's quite fun um, and um, we can then click on the excuse me uh, click on again the same thing to bring up the Mindat localities so you can see the scale of the locality database that we have uh, just picking an area in the UK here, turning on the localities. Each one of those is a Mindat locality um, and we have quite a lot. Actually while we're looking at the, the fossil database I'll show you something I found that's quite fun. Let's go back to Namibia. So Sumeb was over there somewhere. Um, let's put the Excuse me, let's put the fossil database back in again and 
Let's have a look at one of these. I think it was this one. Yeah. So here's a fossil from a, a fossil locality in Namibia, a Permian fossil locality, and it's got this Mesosaurus. So let's have a look at this Mesosaurus, a Permian lizard of some kind. And so here we have the pages which have got the information about a particular um, species uh, from the fossil record. So uh, Mesosaurus, meaning middle lizard, is an extinct genus of reptile from the early Permian of Southern Africa and Southern America. And so here's the distribution of it. And isn't that a great example to show um, continental drift? Um, you've got um, the same species in these two areas here, um, on Southern Africa and on this side of America, from 290 million years ago, when those two places were combined into one supercontinent. So we now have you know, the, the, the split down the middle, some of the fossils on one side and some of the fossils on the other. I always find that amazing. So yeah, the, the, the PaleoBioDB is a massive database of information that we didn't put together. That's all being put together by the PDB, pbdb.org team um, who do a fantastic job. Um, all we've done is, is added our visualization of that data and the ability to link it into MINDAT and be able to cross-reference it and see that. So you may not have any information, you may not have any interest in fossils, or you may be fan fascinated by them, but they're there if you want to find them out, out about the fossils in your region or somewhere else. Right, okay, so a couple of other things I want to show you. Um, in the Learn section, we have a learning centre here. There's a lot of really good introductory articles here to mineralogy. So if you want to learn more about mineralogy and crystallography, it's split into introductory articles, intermediate articles, uh, and then more advanced articles that you may want to have some take some time and read through. Really useful stuff. And also, in here somewhere, um, we have um, the elements. Now I talked about the fact that we had two different periodic tables. So this is a table which is information, basically a database about each of the elements. So if we pick, up, pick, pick up an element almost at random, let's click on cobalt. Then we have a page about the mineralogy of cobalt. And so you see we have the symbol here, obviously all the basic details. Um, you have geochemical information, geochemistry information. Um, and it's abundance, elemental abundances. There are some different photos here, which are quite nice. Um, physical properties, the isotopes, uh, the main ions, and some example minerals where those ions are, are, are contained. Um, simple compounds and their relation to the mineral world. So. Uh, for example, the sulfides, you've got the uh, cobalt sulfide, cobalt persulfide, are found in nature. Uh, the dicobalt trisulfide, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know, but it's not, we haven't got it listed at the moment. Um, selenides, tellurides, hydroxides, fluorides, so a lot of things here. Maybe these will be found as minerals one day in some weird volcanic fumarole or something like that, I don't know. but. There's, there's, um, they haven't been found yet. It's use as a chromophore. Um, how many different mineral species uh, contain essential cobalt? So you can see here sulfides and sulfur salts, the majority of cobalt minerals, and phosphates and arsenates and vanadates are, are second on that. Um, and then we have. Again, on this uh, this side here, the association. Now, this is quite interesting. So, um, this table compares the known valid mineral species listed with cobalt and the other elements listed based on the formula. Um, so, the first data column contains the total number of minerals listed with the cobalt and the element listed for that row. The second column shows that as percentage of all minerals listed with cobalt, and the third final column 
gives that as a percentage against a percentage for all minerals that contain the element listed in each row. So essentially, um, what we're doing here is, is showing the affinity between different elements. So for example, cobalt and oxygen, oxygen is in 58% of cobalt minerals, but oxygen is in a much greater percentage overall of minerals. So relative to other minerals, cobalt is lower in oxygen than 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 the rest um, but arsenic yeah very significantly higher so cobalt and arsenic have a great affinity sulfur have a great affinity nickel has a great affinity iron sort of average uh, selenium has a affinity calcium it doesn't it's lower than calcium so you can see here which elements that it has um, these associations with. Um, now we have a periodic table down below again. Actually, this is the third periodic table, but this one here is like a navigator. You can use it as a quick navigator to click through to another element, uh, but it also allows you to visualize some of these things that we show above. So uh, electronegativity, for example, um, atomic radius, uh, the lowest oxidization state, and the highest oxidization state, um, crustal abundance, um, and so the number of mineral species for each element um, so the mineral species so this is the uh, number of mineral species compared to the total number of mineral species um, so this means a greater percentage of cobalt minerals have oxygen or, or whatever uh, relative frequency and this is that last column that we showed you. So this shows us which other elements cobalt is found mostly associated with. So yeah, we see a set of sulfur, arsenic, selenium, and nickel. And we can, again, we can click on, let's click on arsenic. Scroll down, do the same thing. And here you can see arsenic's affinity is with this block here. So, for example, lithium and arsenic very rarely found together. Um, but uh, nickel, cobalt, copper, arsenic, yeah, very common. And as we're on arsenic at the moment, we can scroll down the most widespread minerals containing arsenic and arsenopyrite, of course. Um, the localities with the greatest number of different arsenic mineral species. Well, hey, Sumeb, our favourite one. Clara mine in Germany is another one which has got a massive variety of minerals. Um, important ores of arsenic. Well, arsenopite is the primary ore of it. The minor ores, other minerals are, are smaller, uh, other significant minerals. And all sorts of photos there just to get you excited. Right, so that shows you some of the things. I want to show you something which is um, kind of hidden away because we're still really under development. Um, in fact, so much that there isn't even a link for it at the moment on the menu. You have to go to it directly. But if we go to mindat.org reference.php, we go to the Rock H Courier Digital Library. Now this is a massive resource of um, references and in many cases viewable PDFs. Of, of books and articles um, and there are actually uh, around about 13 million entries in the system at the moment and about half a million PDFs um, which can be accessed so um, we can have a look at some of these historical books here uh, so let's have a look at this one here um, yeah let's try that one first so this is uh, Bulletin of the uh, new, the new one. Well, I can't spell that right. New England States uh, Department of Agriculture, um, American Mineral Waters. And there's a PDF here, and I can click on the View button, or I could just download it. But if I click on the Viewer, then there's a nice viewer to view things within the site, um, and based on the Mozilla Viewer code, which is very very good, I can sh click on this menu here. And there's various different options, including ability to do spreads, so I can view multiple pages together. 
I can bring up a page preview bar here. I can review the book like that. I can search for things in it. Really, really, really quite powerful. Let's go back again and let's go back again again and again and here's what we just added which is the heritage auctions catalog for the rock age courier collection of fine minerals an auction that um, took place in 2019 which um, rock courier was a longtime supporter of mindat and he very generously uh, requested uh, a percentage of his uh, estate to us on his death um, and on the sale of the collection um, then we managed to get a, a nice amount of money from that which is helping to fund Mindat although of course it's not going to last forever which is why we are continually asking for help to support us financially so um, if you want to support Mindat with a donation, then um, there's a banner at the top that you can click that will give you information on, on how to support our, our continuing our 21 year program so far to uh, provide free minimal information for all. Let's load this one. This one will take a little bit longer because it's a larger file, but hey, I've got good internet. All right, so yeah, this is the auction catalogue. Thanks to Heritage Auctions for letting us uh, post this. And again, let's shrink it down a bit so we can get multiple pages, which is a nice way to view this. Oh, now see that's split, split the wrong way. So, um, yeah, that's the better way of viewing it here. So, fantastic resource, um, fantastic tools. Uh, I have great fun putting them together. I hope I, I hope you have as much fun using these tools as I have uh, creating them. And um, as with always, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, drop them in a message, uh, add them to the uh, the video here, or post them onto Mindat, and I'll do my very best to get back to you. So. Thank you for watching and I look forward to explaining more of the advanced features of Mindat in a future video. Thank you again.